Schön, wenn man dann... Hi oh, guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful spring night in New York, baby. And I have put my drink down in the wrong place. It is a Friday night, that is May 3rd, 2024, and we are back at Bugs in a Jar Farm. For another summer good god friday may 3rd so uh i have been going at it for 14 hours non-stop today i have no idea if this battery is still uh has any juice in it uh and i know i don't have any juice so we're going to make an attempt to do what we do every Friday, and this battery will probably crash if I don't first. And uh, at which point I will not be uh, continuing this ain't gonna happen roundup rant here on this Friday night. Put this little dog to bed here. He's had a hard day of chippy chasing like that. So, in no particular order, here we go again, down the uh, list of things that ain't gonna happen. Here we go, the old sucking carbon out of the air. Scientists say new material, all right, can suck carbon out of the air faster than trees. Well, that, you know, there, there's a real high bar to set for yourself. Uh, sucking carbon out of the air faster than a fucking tree. <laughs> oh, God. The devil is in the details. Yes, here, here is a no shit Sherlock when, uh, from that great plastic tree detox. We have an update. Plastic talks end without agreement on curbing production of plastic. Yes, negotiations on a future global treaty to tackle soaring plastic pollution wrapped up early on Tuesday without agreement on a proposal to consider sustainable plastic production limits. Yes. Oh, no shit. Sherlock. Uh, well, I usually uh, reserve our little uh, apocalyptimist in resonance, our collapse denier in resonance on medium.com. Will lock it for the end, but he's already showing up here. We can save the world from ourselves. Yes, new studies show how current technology can stop climate change in its tracks. Our modern doom scrolling addiction can make it feel like we are miles away from halting climate change and saving the world from decades of our environmental crimes. This notion has some truth. Yes, 99% is some truth. But such a broad brushstroke hides the tremendous success stories of the past few years. You see, recent studies have shown that not only can our current climate technology completely usurp planet wrecking fossil fuels, but it already is in the real world. And this transition is far from force, but actually inevitable. So let me give you your daily dose of optimism by explaining how we are unavoidably 
saving the world and uh, I'm gonna have to uh, do my rant on uh, on carbon alarmist and collapse deniers and stuff where once again as the broken record for anybody who does not understand this if every single thing that will lock it uh, had to say in that bullshit story about shit that ain't gonna happen really did happen it would make zero difference towards saving the planet okay we we need to cut the shit on these these carbon emissions and this uh renewable uh energy transition all of this happy horse shit even if it did happen which it ain't it would not make a fucking difference Okay. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, if you're looking for insurance in the state of California, probably more and more in the state of Florida, one more thing that ain't going to happen. State Farm announces major insurance policy change affecting tens of thousands of households uh, State Farm, California's largest insurance provider, announced it would not renew insurance policies for approximately 72,000 homes in the state beginning this summer. You know, those earlier announcements were, we have heard anywhere between 30,000 and 42,000 uh, insurance policies that State Farm is not going to be re is not going to be writing again this summer. Now they're saying seventy two thousand, uh, seventy two thousand. Anyway, so those seventy two thousand uh, households in California ain't going to happen when you go to renew your mostly fire insurance. Florida will be anything related to a hurricane. All right. You know, sometimes in these ain't going to happen stories, as I say, we actually have some honest reporting about shit that ain't going to happen. So uh, maybe Will Lockett has not read this story from some outfit called Engadget. Research indicates that carbon dioxide removal plans will not be enough to meet Paris Treaty goals. There is a fairly large gap but between what nations have committed to and what is actually required to limit warming to one and a half C. Is there anybody still believing at this point in history that uh, this one and a half degree target, uh, I think it's uh, pretty much, uh, we, we've already pretty much gone a year uh, breaching that bullshit one and a half C target, and they're still talking about it. New research conducted by the University of East Anglia suggests that current carbon removal plans will not be enough to comply with the Paris Treaty goals to limit global warming to one and a half degrees C, as reported in a study published by Nature. Scientists came to this conclusion by measuring the emission gap between various national climate protection plans and what is actually needed to reach that goal. The first of its kind study found a gap 
of 3.2 billion tons of carbon dioxide between current global plans to remove carbon from the atmosphere and what is needed by 2050 to avoid the worst impacts of global warming. These impacts include, we, we all know, since 2010, the United Nations Environmental Organization has taken similar measurements of this emissions gap. UEA's research, which focuses primarily on CO2 removal, indicates that climate policy requires a more ambitious scope if we are to, well, survive as a species. And there you go. Okay, from the, uh, the unadulterated horseshit headline of the week, and there's many headlines almost identical to this one. It's unadulterated horseshit. World leaders make historic decision to shut down, shut down all coal power plants by 2035. The advanced economies of the world are committed to phasing out coal. Now, of course, uh, China and India are not in uh, the group of seven. I don't think so, yeah. So, this does not include China, India, Indonesia. Uh, this is the group of seven countries have further demonstrated their commitment to a low-carbon future by announcing that member nations will phase out unabated, unabated coal-fired power stations by 2035. Once more, the devil is in the details. Headline, world leaders make historic decision to shut down all coal power plants by 2035. First sentence of the story, group of seven countries have further demonstrated their commitment to a low carbon future by announcing member nations will phase out unabated coal power stations by 2035. So who are the G7? The US, the UK, Canada, France, Germany, Italy, and Japan with the European Union also participating. Um, while the news that polluting dirty fuel for power generation is on the way out is encouraging, the agreement had a little wiggle room, a little wiggle room for the member nations the unabated addition to the announcement, this unadulterated horseshit announcement of all coal power planets, this bullshit unabated addition to the announcement means that coal could still be used as long as carbon pollution is released, it is not released into the atmosphere. And furthermore, countries can pick, quote, a timeline consistent with keeping a limit of one and a half C temperature rise within reach, within reach, in line with countries' net zero pathways, close quote. So the, 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 uh, you, you, the, there's so many unadulterated horseshit ain't gonna happen. Uh, it ain't gonna happen uh, that we're gonna stay inside this unadulterated horseshit one and a half C 
temperature rise and, 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 and this whole bullshit about these net zero pathways uh, sure as shit ain't gonna happen because net zero is a fucking bright green lie. Uh, net zero, it, it, it is this goddamn little smoke and mirrors accounting trick that has nothing whatsoever to do with taking carbon emissions to zero. There's a lot of fucking bullshit packed into that word net that I guess they think these clueless little moron, little limp dick greeny lefties, they don't hear this word net before the word zero carbon emissions. And then we get back to the problem if we do uh, get to net zero or even real zero, it makes no fucking difference to saving this planet, uh, whether carbon emissions are, are, are fucking 40 billion tons a year or zero. Okay? Cut this carbon crap. It's the biggest goddamn diversion, distraction, uh, bright green lie of them all. Ugh, oh, Jesus. I get so tired of listening to this shit. I have to hear this word carbon emissions uh, one more time. Well, well uh, I, I guess... If you are any one of our fellow Earthlings living on the last uh, unspoiled stretch of the Mediterranean, uh, you can kiss that goodbye uh, because your future ain't going to happen. Multi-billion dollar plan to build luxury resorts threatens natural coastal area. This jewel is at risk of being lost forever. A massive area of pristine land known for its incredible biodiversity, an oasis of nature, as Inside Climate News called it, is under threat of being demolished for development into a tourist destination. This is Albania. I did not realize Albania, uh, front of the Mediterranean. Albania's V-J-O-S-E. I have no idea how to pronounce V-J-O-S-E. River feeds a 59,000 acre delta that features a 10,000 acre uh, lagoon. The delta is largely untouched by humans and is considered the largest and most pristine river delta along the Mediterranean. Um, that you can kiss it all goodbye. Uh, the Albanian government is paving the way for the area's development by constructing an international airport close to the lagoon. The airport is just the first step in the European country's goal of turning the area into the Albanian Riviera lined with five-star resorts. Uh, anyway, guys, I'm not saying that the actual destruction of the last uh, piece of, uh, uh, of surviving nature ain't gonna happen. Now, it's probably not going to happen uh, as much as the Albanian government would like it to happen, but enough of it will happen to, to fuck everything up. Okay. So, uh, if you're, uh, hoping uh, to enjoy uh, the last piece of nature on the Mediterranean. Give it up. That ain't going to happen. All right, but we're going to end with this article from Futurism. 
And uh, this goddamn camera, I really need to get a new camera. Well, maybe we have time for one more from Futurism. Scientists propose building Wall of Death on the moon. Yes, scientists have come up with a surprising new way for astronauts to stay in shape once they are residing on the surface of the moon. A lunar wall of death that allows them to take advantage of the weak gravitational forces. In other words, the same kind of cylindrical structure used by motorcycle riding stunt performers could serve as a way for astronauts to stay fit on the moon. An important problem to solve as NASA looks to return astronauts to the lunar surface as part of its Artemis program within this decade. A team of scientists led by University of Milan physiology professor Alberto Minetti even put the idea to the test. Yes, successfully demonstrating that astronauts on the moon could run around such a contraption unaided using a 100-foot telescopic crane and some bungee cords. Yes, don't forget the bungee cords. The team allowed the runner to experience moon levels of gravity. Yes, a video shows a researcher effortlessly running around along the circular structure potentially revolutionizing the future workout routines of moon-dwelling astronauts, said Minetti. I am amazed that nobody had this idea before. This could be a convenient way to train on the moon. Oh, God, we're so fucked, people. Uh, the wall of death on the moon. There's plenty of walls of death right here on this planet. Now, that's going to happen. All of the various walls of death on this planet. We don't need to go to the damn moon to build a wall of death. Uh, Jesus. But anyway, I am exhausted and uh, I have got to wrap up this week's Ain't Gonna Happen Roundup rant. And uh, you know, what's got to happen is I got to go to bed. Looks like my little dog has beat me to it. Yes, little dog. He said, Pop, this pillow is going to happen. And chippies are going to happen tomorrow. Are you going to get some chippies happening tomorrow or not? Bye, guys.